rascals. Here come the rascals. Ladies and gentlemen, as you slowly start to trickle in, um, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome my good friend, um, mentor, brother in this journey together we call life, Coach JV. Um, we're going to be talking about plenty of things that he does, um, that I do, and just a, a great perspective on life um, that we've both adopted throughout the years. Um, but before we get into any of that, Coach, would you like to briefly introduce yourself to the audience here today and everyone at home? Absolutely. So I'm Coach JV. I'm the top health mindset and coach in the world. I always say what you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. If you can see it in your mind, eventually you can hold it right here in your hands. What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. And that's why we're here today with the bearable bull. <laughs> Love you, brother. Without a doubt, bro. And, and you were even, that's one of those things, you, you know, it sounds very cliche. You're like, oh, we're talking about visualizing, really? <laughs> but it's one of those things where, you know, so many people, um, they don't believe they can do things. So many people, they use language that deteriorates their dreams. They say, I can't, as opposed to how can I? Right. I know that you're very big on that. So one of the biggest things that I know made a change from my life as well, as well as yours, is finding out how I can do things and envisioning myself um, doing the things I want to do. You know, even even if it's, it seems so unrealistic, hey, we're alive. That in itself is an improbability. Right. So um, it's one of those things where aim for the damn stars. And if you fail, you fail upwards. So I know yes. you're a big believer on that, but um, something I really wanted to discuss today is not just crypto, right? We're both crypto dudes, but um, in my personal opinion, and I think I can speak for both of us, um, we're overall entrepreneurs and we're going to touch on some crypto things that we do and things like that. But crypto for me has always been a vehicle for financial freedom and to help empower other people to free their lives from the shackles of society and the nine to five and other things like that. Um, so what I really wanted to discuss today is a couple things that we both do um, that have helped generate income businesses and things like that on top of our investments in the crypto space. So coach, I'll let you take the floor and talk about a couple things that you do with your personal life and your businesses and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I, I learned is, well, by losing all my money for the third time two and a half years ago, that was the biggest, most powerful lesson I've ever learned in my life. So I'd ask myself a question, why do I keep losing all my money? The reason why is because I grew up in a just over broke paradigm. I grew up in a uh, not a poverty family, a middle class family where, you know, the things like money doesn't grow on trees. And every time around tax season, we go on trips. It was just patterns, deep rooted subconscious mind, wealth patterns or lack of wealth patterns that were put into my subconscious mind. So when I lost mm -hmm. everything two and a half years ago, um, I read a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. Now before, um, that's why I like how you started with, oh, the mumbo, Joe, you know, manifestation. It's like, yeah, manifestation is important, but you got to take action, right? And you also have to take action around the right people. And once you take action around the right people, you got to make sure you have the right patterns. They're really important. So what I was failing to, to understand is how money works. So I read Think and Grow Rich multiple times. I mean, over and over again, Rich Dad, Poor Dad but it still didn't click until I read Richest Man in Babylon. And I realized that I was always pigeonholed into like one business or one company. And so mm -hmm. I started to work around diversification. And so I started to understand, I created a plan in my mind. I'm like, here's exactly what I want my plan to look like. I want to own multiple companies. I also want to be a crypto investor, but I don't want to be just pigeonholed in crypto. So what I created is an ecosystem over the last two and a half years. I went from completely broke to financial freedom in two and a half years. Um, and I will be building generational wealth within the next 10 years. And so what I did was, is I built out a very strict plan. I said, okay, here's coach JV, the bank, right? So I'm the bank, right? Screw the, the fiat system. I'm going to be my own bank. I'm an ex banker. So I understand how banks work. I said, so how do banks operate? How do the richest people in the world operate? Well, what they do is they leverage other people's money, the bank's money, and they buy assets. And with the profits from the assets, they buy more assets and they just keep this profit generation machine going. So I was like, well, how can I do that at a small scale? And then how can I scale up? And so what I did was this first cryptocurrency was 99% cryptocurrency for me, right? So I had lost everything. So I moved back in with my parents. Admittedly, I tell people that because it was the right thing to do. I was like, I could go get an apartment for my kids. I, you know, went through, um, you know, a divorce or, you know, assets where our business got shut down, all that stuff. And I was like, you know what? 
I'm just going to go live with my parents and I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to sleep on the floor and the couch for a year and a half. I told my mom, I said, give me one year and a half and I'm going to follow this, this uh, richest man in Babylon concept. So we started hustling, hustling our asses off. Every single dime I took, I put it into cryptocurrency. But what I did was every time I got profits from cryptocurrency, I'd pull some profits and I would say, how can I make this make money? So I would stake it into a cryptocurrency, right? And so I was doing all these different things within cryptocurrency to make that passive income. But every time I made passive income, I didn't go buy shoes. I didn't go buy clothes. I put it back into something that would generate income and quickly couple thousand became 10, 10 became six figures. And you know the story with cryptocurrency, if you're doing it correctly, right? So then I said, okay, now I'm pigeonholing cryptocurrency. When people say they're diversified in crypto, it really, when they say I'm diversified, you're not diversified if you're diversified across crypto. You're diversified across crypto, but diversification means you have multiple sources of income, right? In different areas of the sector. And so what I decided, I was like, I need to find mentors. I need to find mentors. So I started to understand that I, if somebody approaches me, so, you know, we're both influencers. So a lot of people approach me for businesses and I say, that's great. You know, if I believe in your company, if I really believe in your company, I don't want to promote your company. If I really believe in your product, I want to own part of your company. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is I asked the question, I said, I want this much ownership in the company. That's, that's how you can get me involved in your company and knowing my power as an influencer and my power as an entrepreneur and understanding how money systems work. I presented myself of adding value to these companies. So I went from one company to two companies, to three companies to four, now owning a, a portion of seven companies. So I thought, okay, so now that's great. Those are startups. And I was like, what are the real, real wealthy people doing? They're acquiring businesses, scaling them, selling yeah. them and acquiring more businesses by using yeah. other people's money. So now currently um, I have my cryptocurrency portfolio. I have seven startups and then I'm getting into, I'm closing, should be closing my first LBO within 30 days. That's leveraging other people's money. So, um, and I know also I have my precious metals, which is, I use my silver as hedge against us dollar collapsing. And then I also have an insurance product, which is my guaranteed retirement. So now I feel very secure and now it's time to go all in. And so that's, that's in a nutshell, what I'm doing currently, what, what my, basically my foundation for the coach JV enterprises. Very nice. And I love what you said there because you said it's not about being just diversified amongst different cryptos because you're in the same sector, right? Let's say tomorrow some random regulation comes and everything goes down 70% like, like because it can happen, you know, we're in crypto, we know it can happen. Then your entire portfolio goes to the gutter, right? And then if you're making income from just those places, then everything goes to the gutter. So um, actually, a very important piece of advice I received from Kevin O'Leary um, from Shark Tank was 20% of your portfolio, your wealth should never be in more than one sector, and 5% of your wealth should never be in just one stock. Right. But he did say he's breaking that rule a little bit just with real estate right now, but it's one of those things that when I heard that, I'm like, okay. I need to begin really making powerful moves because with myself personally, and it's <laughs> it's one of those things where I'm grateful for it because this is what got me to where I am today. But now it's the time for me to really diversify into other mm -hmm. asset classes because for me, crypto was my, my safe haven. I went all in. In 2016, I said, I came across Bitcoin and Ether. Um, I rode the bull run all the way up, but then it, everything tanked to the gutter, gutter because I didn't take profits. And um, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things that, that that's what I pride myself on is that I'm still here. I made it through the depths of hell and back. Um, I lost 80% of my portfolio within <laughs> like two and a half weeks um, yeah. from the peak of that bull run. And like, that's, that's very psychologically da damaging, right? Yes. We just saw a little... 35% crash, uh, quote, little 35% crash the other day. And it's one of those things where people really felt that now the sentiments completely shifted. I'm um, imagining 80% crash in just two weeks, you know, and that was my net worth at the time. I went all in in that asset class. Um, so for about quite a few years, there was no income coming in because I never wanted to just over broke. I never wanted a job because I knew that that's not the key to wealth to the point where I wasn't making any money at all. And um, <laughs> as a coach, I'm very stubborn um, to the point where I wasn't making any money at all. And um, I was just trying to build my own businesses. I started off with like Facebook ads and drop shipping and stuff like that. But the issue was 
I didn't know how to go about uh, making the correct ads to drive um, traffic to my um, to my stores, right? So I was right. just spending on ads, 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 swiping credit cards, credit cards, credit cards, trying to build my businesses, not buying some Louis V bags or, or shoes or anything like that. It was trying to build my businesses. Defaulted on four credit cards, have met, had like 250K in debt, including student loans and all that nonsense. So with no income coming in, still not getting a job, trying to invest in crypto is an abomination, coach. I don't know how the hell I'm here, <laughs> right? But- can I say something about that real quick, which is important to really recognize is the reason why you're here is because you made the effort and you tried and you kept pursuing. I think that's the biggest thing is people see all those things. People might see that as a failure, right? Same thing with me. I was buried in debt, no money, but I kept on going. I kept on pursuing and every single, so you learned, right? You learned about ads. You learned what didn't work. You what did work. It's in all those things catapulted you into where you're at today. Nice. And and that's something that I really want to make sure um, the audience at home understands is that that was a massive failure, but I've failed upwards since then because I've, I've learned from my mistakes. Um, I've learned from um, the experiences and I've acquired all these new skills, right? It's like I, I saw this diagram once that showed the percentage of information you retain from different ways of learning, whether it's reading or watching videos or listening to lectures. It's you retain 10% of information from reading, like around 40% from watching videos, but you retain 100% of information when you experience it, right? And mm. actually do it. So, so it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, I failed hard, but I tried and I did it. And yep. I was at the point where I was making zero dollars and zero cents for a prolonged period of time. But then I just started reading, 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 reading with Jordan Harry's TED talk over here. Say hello for everyone, Jordan. That TED mm -hmm. talk really helped me um, get a lot of information in my mind to get skills that I needed and, and ideas that I needed to do everything I'm doing today. I started a YouTube video that, thank God, um, <laughs> was successful because at the time it was, it was either that or nothing. And I've been able to get whether it's my Udemy course, my mentorship program, YouTube, other things, build um, a name for myself here. And since have diversified into things like Airbnb and real estate and um, precious metals, I'm not in the stock market right now because um, you know everything's too frothy, but I am looking to, once things correct by a lot, buy some incredible businesses in there. So yes. it's one of those things where the diversification for me is, is, it's already beginning, but mm -hmm. it's really going to happen after crypto takes off the way I expect it to. And then mm -hmm. spread ourselves into different sectors. Because one thing I could tell you is, um, while I love this asset class, it could be a little stressful, you know? So, oh, so yeah. Yeah. And I think too, we were talking about this on our live just recently. It was just a little bit ago that, you know, people need to get used to being bored. Like if you can't get used to being yes. bored, you're going to get yes. wrecked. You're going to get wrecked 100%. Investing and getting wealthy is boring as shit. Excuse my language. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> it's just boring. It's really, it should be boring. It should feel boring. If, if you, the excitement, the dopamine, that's, if you're looking for that, it's like, you know, go to the casino, go to, go to a gas station and buy a lottery ticket. Like that's why I believe people get wrecked is because like I had to be patient to get to where I'm at. I mean, it was two and a half, two, I mean, four, I left corporate America in 2000 banking in 2017 I didn't make a dime for three years, man. It was horrible. It was like, and then yeah. finally when I started getting paid. They shut my business down. I wow. was like, oh my God. And so it was just like, it was just doing the boring things consistently over. I'm, I'm, a, I'm all about consistency. That's one of the most important things. I think people should understand, you know, it's, it's going to, I believe it's going to go parabolic as well, you know, get some money out of the market and then get, get used to being bored, man. Fall yes. in love. Yes. And that's one of those things too, is like, I can outweigh the best traders on the planet <laughs> into more profits, you know, because they have to deal with, you know, the tax implications of trading um, income tax as opposed to capital gains taxes and things like that. And you know, something I actually posted on YouTube and I just and that I discuss in my mentorship program and stuff is like collateral loans. Right. Um, and we use me personally, I use Nexo as the platform mm -hmm. to do this. Um, with collateral loans is things that, you know, the wealthy have done 
um, for a long time, you know, is draw against their assets, take loans against their assets. With crypto, it's volatile, so I can only get up to 30% of my XRP's value, for example. So I executed that move a couple of days ago, so I could be able to purchase some properties, right? Put down payment on a couple homes, because in my opinion, um, speaking with people like Natalia from the CEO of Proppy and Kevin O'Leary and things like that, various others. What I know is that residential is going to keep going to the moon for quite a while. Like these are the the one percenters that are speaking, not, you know, Joe Schmo in the comment section say, why you buy re real estate now? It's so high. I'm like, well, that's because inflation is going through the roof. That's why. So, so these, these properties are fairly priced based on um, the rate of inflation, believe it or not. So, so it's things like that, that essentially I have free money. It's not my money, right? It's someone else's money that they gave to me against my assets. Um, I've created the, the right, I've used the right tools to make sure I safeguard my assets from the downside volatility. And in my opinion, I think XRP is going to the moon, you know, relatively soon. I don't think it's going to crash if it does that much. And, you know, essentially when everything's said and done, I'll be over collateralized, right? I can take back essentially almost all my XRP and I have properties now. What did yeah. I do? That's, that's incredible. It's an incredible yep. thing. You know, so it's one of those things that I tell people you have to really read, 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 look at people much smarter than you and listen to the one percenter, not, not people that make a $60,000 salary because they're going to kill your dreams and tell you everything's too risky. And it's like, yeah, that's that's why we're waiting for stimulus checks. Right. So you look at these financial advisors who are certified by the government. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to financial advisors, but they go through a government certification to be certified to sell us products and services that are supposed to make us rich. Well, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but... <laughs> Exactly, man. But no offense to financial advisors. <laughs> no, no, no offense at all. Um, but what I'll say is, um, aside from that, what you just mentioned, I know there's a couple different things that you do outside of crypto and even within the crypto. Um, do you want to spend a little bit of time just discussing some of the things that you do? Yeah, sure. Like uh, the LBOs and business stuff. Sure. Everything. Yeah. Coach. What I, we're, we're laying it all out on the table for whoever yeah, so, wants. To so like basically what, so my, my first initial business was uh, just like you, I started in my, uh, I started talking about crypto on my YouTube channel. I actually, you were one of my biggest inspirations, you and digital asset investor. I, I remember the moment I heard the first video from the bearable bull. Um, I, I, it was, it was amazing. I remember what store I was walking into. I, I <laughs> wild. And I was like, dude, this guy's pretty remarkable. I was, it's pretty neat. And I started listening to digital asset investor and I was getting into crypto, right? And there was a guy named Jay Bills that walked into, so I was, I had looked at Tika Tori, five coins to 5 million. And there's a point to the story. And uh, I was like, this is really interesting. I remember I had the banker mentality. I was, I was bought in that cryptocurrency was a fraud. I had this broke mentality. I came from banking. I was stuck in the mm -hmm. indoctrination system. And so I'm like thinking, man, what is this crypto? And then somebody, so I started to understand it, set up a, 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 a exchange. And then all of a sudden some guy walks in and says his name, Jay Bill. He said, uh, have you ever heard of XRP? And I looked it up and I was like, holy shit. Like I, I'm an ex-banker. I scaled, I learned how to scale banks. I went to CBA executive banking school and I had to pay attention because I have dyslexia. So it was tough for me. So I really had to pay attention on how to scale these banks. And I'm like, yes. if I had this in the banking system, I would have won the whole SIM model. I mean, like this is literally the solve for banks with the with the interest rates, or excuse me, with the um, like Basel three, the Lib uh, Lib LIBOR moving to SOFOR. Like there's yeah. all these things happening with banks. I'm like, people don't understand. Banks literally have to move into blockchain and, and yes. DLT. They have to. Like when people argue with me, I'm like, sorry, this is something we need to talk about because like people, like I love these TikTokers that, that you know, talk shit. And they're like, oh, XRP. I'm like, do you realize like, banks have to it's not will they they have to move in distributed ledger technology they have to move into blockchain because number one they they have to have gold on reserves for riskier assets right how do they make money right? they got fee income they got capital markets right all that stuff and then they got interest income and so it's like all that shit's being squeezed if interest rates go up right they're, they usually banks make a lot more money when interest rates go up but if the market starts to collapse and people start to lose all their money right so they're going to be fee 
income. Fee income is going to be huge for them. If XRP can move their money at the speed of light, right, for a mm -hmm. very low fraction of the cost, they're going to bake in a nice little fee for the customers, right? It's going to be a lot cheaper than it would be to a wire transfer, but the profit margin is going to go up because they're going to be moving at the speed of light. But I know I digress with that, but uh, where was I going with that? Oh, cryptocurrency. And so, um, so I re really realized I love business. So I think it's important for people to find what you love. What do I love doing? I love taking ideas and scaling them. I love the complexity of trying to figure out, just like you were trying to figure out the ads, like trying to figure out how we said, how are we going to take 3T Warrior Academy global? So we're now global, 3,500 warriors worldwide, 16 different countries. And I was like, we said we were going global. And I'm going to explain how I do these things subconsciously. So we took 3T Warrior Academy global. We started our clothing company, which is uh, 3T Warrior Labs. We have a supplement company. Um, what else? We got a supplement company. I have a podcast company that I'm part owner of. Oh, thank you. We have a podcast company that I'm part owner of. Um, I also do uh, LBOs, leverage buyouts. So I just got into that. I'm working with my mentor, Ken Mack. And so we just got into that and, um, or he's been into it for a long time, man. Wait, wait, I'm wait, wait. You see, you see that follower count? Five, eight, nine. That's a oh, sign. Shit. <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a sign right there, baby. That's wow. a sign. Nothing, dude. We're in, we're, we're in the matrix. This is a simulation. What's going on right now? <laughs> it is, it is, it is. It's it's the it's a, it's our simulation where we own it but um yeah it's it's so i started so what are leverage buyouts now my brain was just like boom when i when i learned about leverage buyouts. so i have seven startups i'm working with right now and they're difficult startups are difficult man it's it's your your you know there's five of them aren't, aren't even generating revenue right now we have meetings all the time i'm so my whole goal is freedom i want to be free um i want to be able to move where i want to go where i want pick my kids up when i want spend time with my kids but I noticed with the startups, I was starting to be involved in meetings all the time. And I'm like, it just constantly. So I'm really getting into LBOs. So my goal is I own my company called Freedom Asset Management Group. Um, right now we have seven companies under management. And my goal is to have 100 million under management within the next year. So I want to share something. Why do I say, why do I verbalize 100 million? Why do I say I'm going to be a billionaire? Because it's really, really important to continue yes. to tell the universe what you're going to do. And I don't give a yes. shit what people think. I don't care if you think, if you don't think I'm going to do it, that doesn't matter to me, right? So you mm -hmm. have to let your reticular activating system know what's going on. And so um, there, there's a thing, if you're shocked when someone says you're going to be a billionaire, then you'll never be a billionaire. You have to accept what already is. And we're really big on like our whole team, everybody in our team that works in the academy is has their vision board in our academy. Like I'm staring at my vision board right now. So like you were, you're on my vision board. It says bearable bull. And I interviewed you. I think I told you. <laughs> that's incredible. And you're on my and, vision. And that's, that's an example of it actually working. You know, that it works. It does work. It does. It really, the reason why it works, like let's take the mumbo jumbo esoteric secret out of it. Right. The reason why it works is because think about it. Everything is thought mixed with desire. So like if you're a religious person, right. They always tell you, Oh, you don't want to desire or strive. You wouldn't be here if you didn't dr desire, <laughs> nobody would be here. You wouldn't even be here. Your parents had to think about getting together through desire. Somebody had to desire to create a phone. Somebody had desire to create this microphone. Somebody had desire to create cryptocurrency. You had someone to desire. Had to, someone had to desire to make sure that you were born. Right. Yes. That, that in itself. Yep. Yeah everything is desire. And so everybody's a manifestation expert. And I want to explain this. We, we call it, Kev calls it manifestation in reverse. Everybody on this line, everybody going to watch this in the future, the millions of people that are going to watch this. Okay. They're there. Everybody's a manifestation. If you are worried about your future, your 401k, you're just over broke. You're worried about your wife cheating on you or your husband cheating on you. You're a manifestation expert. You're thinking about something that doesn't even exist and you're bringing it into your current reality, which is making it part of your reality. So you're creating a vibrational field within your body that is attracting that thing to you. And you're asking a question to your brain and your subconscious mind can only answer questions. That's all it does. It's Google, right? So when I figured that out, I was like, oh shit, I'm going to be in the, I said, I stopped saying I'm going to be a millionaire. I said, what are the steps? And lo and behold, here we are. Right. And so I said, I'm going to have a hundred million under management. Um, I started, I, can we, can we dive into manifestation? The three, six, nine. That's we can coach. I'm a, as, 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 um, as, kind of professional as I pretend to keep things right <laughs> like like uh, this is this is like it means a lot that you speak about this so openly because this is a secret that I've personally used as well like everything you do um I just don't discuss it on my channel because I just try and keep it on 
on yep. like what's going on macro economics and politically yep. and things like that but this is extremely yes. important and, and i have to stress that that becoming a millionaire and becoming transforming your life starts from within it's not no one's coming to save you like you like to say um yep. it's small changes and habits that compound into an embodiment of a character that you want to be and everything yeah. I want to do is become my ideal approximation. I always have an ideal version of myself I'm aiming for, and yeah. I'll always fail at achieving it, but it keeps me going. You know, it really keeps me going. So keep going for it. Keep yes. going for so, it. So I'm going to rephrase the saying that I say every single time I introduce myself, right? So remember what you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. Why is it? Why do I say heart? Because like Dr. Joe Dispenza, when you connect your heart and mind together, it creates a vibrational field within your body. Once you verbalize it, now you can't stop it. It's out into the universe. It's actually out in there in the field of vibration, right? Okay. So what you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. The reason why I'm able to talk to you guys and move my hands and walk and talk and do all this stuff, because my body, when I was a baby, I didn't know how to, when I was a baby, I was like this. So we repeatedly watched other people within our paradigm do that. We learned how to speak English. And if you were in a multi-language household, you could speak different languages because mm -hmm. as a baby to eight years old, you're pure subconscious. So if your family spoke 10 different, 10 different languages, you're going to pick it up like that. So what happens is at eight years old, we develop what's called the conscious mind, your thinking mind. And what we do is we already have all the answers. My five-year-old son has all the answers to the world, to life. We actually unlearn it through the paradigm that we're living or the circumstances or the people places things around us so they unteach us how powerful we are and so most people watching this if you're not successful have been taught that you're not successful mm -hmm. the truth is you're already rich you're already wealthy you're already healthy you're already abundant and you have to relearn that but relearning something is very uncomfortable man because mm -hmm. when you start to relearn something the people around you fell in love with the person who they designed so they fell in love with the person they designed. Your parents fell in love with the person they designed. And all of a sudden you become who you're truly supposed to be. And the, the, the resistance is coming from them either wanting that or there's a vibrational mismatch. Some people call it unequally yoked. But I want to dive into 369 because I was doing, I've been doing manifestation since I, I, I woke up from attempted suicide 16 years ago now to a book called The Secret. And um just, I think, blind luck, man, or just being so broke and so on my back that I was just like, I, I have no choice. I have a three-year-old daughter. I got to figure this out. So I started being positive affirmations. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. And I, you know, I moved up really quickly. I'm charismatic. I moved up in banking, but recently about, oh God, I keep saying a year ago, I think it was. So last November, last November, I had been doing manifestation for a long time, had gotten pretty far. And I, I love Nikola Tesla. I love Nikola Tesla. I just love what he represented. Uh, I love that he was trying to bring free energy to people. I love the freedom aspect of it. You know, um, I think he was just, you know, well before his time. Genius. Genius. And so he, there's a, a Nikola Tesla theory, the 369, right? And if you, you can go into uh, Fibonacci, you can go to all these different codings things if you want to, we won't go into that. But um, what I realized through Dr. Joe Dispenza, that the, the brain is just Google. It just answers questions. That's it. That's all it does. And so I was saying three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, nine times a night, I was saying, thank you for, thank you for the one K a day in income. Okay. I said, thank you for the one K a day in income. So I was thinking as it already existed, I held it in my heart and mind and I got there. It was kind of fumbly, right? And then I was like, I heard this video from Dr. Joe Dispenza. I can't remember which video it was, but he's like, it's like Google or somebody said that. And I was like, okay, if it's Google, then I just have to ask it a question. Your subconscious mind has to answer the question. So if you say to your subconscious mind, why do I keep ending up with shitty people in my life? Guess what it's going to do? It's going to keep showing you why you end up with it. It's just going to answer the question. That's all it does based on your experiences. It keeps reliving the experience. So I said, what are the steps to 3K? So I changed. I said, what are the steps to 3K a day in income? What are the steps to 3K a day in income? What are the steps to 3K a day in income? Three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, nine times a night. I would hold the vibrational field for 17 seconds and I let it go. Boom, nailed it. I was like, whoa, okay, okay. But now, let me, let me just interrupt for a second because I love exactly what you got into. We die into our culture. That's Ooh. how I like to describe it. We dive into our culture. And one of the greatest things that um, I ever heard is the questions you ask will change your reality because the answers you weren't even looking for will find you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's genuinely 
like a line that changed my life. So um, I love that you were going into that. Um, I just, I just had to say that. Thank you. Thank no, you. it's, it's great. It's cause like we're all, you're, you're literally, as you look at your physical reality right now, you're literally just thought and desire. Mm-hmm. Like I, uh, people get so pissed at me when I'm coaching, I'm like, this is your fucking fault. You're in this position. Like it's nobody's fault. What do you mean? I'm sick. I'm like, it's, it's a choice on how you're going to react to your sickness. You have, you have everything. Every situation in life is neutral. Everything is. You want to know the issue, that there's an issue when it comes to people coach. And that it's that we can manifesting. We are manifestation creatures, our mind, our body, our heart, everything that is, that is what um can make it happen. But we are stuck in the prison of time mm. in order for, and in order to manifest those things time has to proceed to see those changes right and that's where the habits compound right so we're stuck in the prison of time and some people get yes. impatient behind the cage right if yes. you will. So, yeah that goes into crypto right the, the you cage. have to you have to be willing to continue to move forward be consistent like you said even yep. if you don't see the immediate transformation because eventually the shackles will come off once mm-hmm. enough time has come gone by yeah and also i tell people i'm like you don't want what you don't deserve you don't you don't want a million dollars when you don't deserve it yet yes you will lose it. Yes. i guarantee you, you'll lose it you do not want what you don't deserve or what you haven't earned yet and i say the earned is not like a, a trophy it's it's allowing your subconscious mind to be ready to accept the current value that you're receiving right because if you get value that doesn't match your internal vibration it will always leave you so if you finally find you, you luck out and you find the person of your dreams, but your internal vibration is still shitty and it's still connected to the old vibration, you're going to push that person away. It's simple. Mm-hmm. You might get lucky and meet this great person. And they, when they meet your vibration, they're like, uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. It may have been a physical attraction first because you're just attracting your level of vibration. That's it. Mm-hmm. And some I'm going to say coach, and, and this is not to get off topic at all, but um, it kind of, <laughs> this is the biggest thing that changed my life and it was humbling myself to my situation and my limitations of what I know and and that's when I started reading um close to a book a day Jordan I'm not that smart yet you're you're Mm -hmm. still the speed reading dude but um um it's one of those things where I didn't have the resources or the ability to pay for mentors, mentors or mentorships or didn't know how to go about seeking mentors, right? But we're, we're blessed in this technological world where we can find mentors that are giving out free advice on YouTube, right? And we could take whatever you, you can get from those mentors, boom, copy paste into your life right copy paste here we could take these books that are free information i don't i don't care if you have to pay 15 dollars. you can afford it pay for it read the books these books are revolutionary they change the way your mind works as well mentors and mentorships are 100 percent the most important thing that's changed my life there was a time where where i said man I know enough myself. I, I can do it. I don't necessarily need a mentor. I have these books in YouTube and YouTube university that can change my life. No, 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 no. That's only step one, right? Once you get past step one and you have enough capital to be able to afford getting a mentor, right? Do it in whatever field it is and whatever it is you're passionate about. And I know you have a program like that. Um, I have one that I launched recently as well. And, and guys, if you're here, I'm not over here trying to show my program or his program. I'm just trying to tell you genuine lessons that I've learned that have changed my life. I've paid, I've paid over a hundred thousand dollars in mentorships, just yeah. from very important, intelligent, and powerful people that I want to be more like. Whether it's um, whether it's from investing in stocks options, real estate, Airbnb, any mentorship where I vetted the person giving that information. And I'm like, okay, I like you. Boom. Snap of the finger. No questions asked. What's the price? Oh, yep. that's the price. Okay, cool. Now I've recently gone into like photography and videography mentorships and travel mentorships too, because this I'm preparing myself for the next stage of my life where I'm like, okay, now my freedom is here. Now I'm visualizing, right? 
what my next steps are. I'm going to be a great drone pilot, photographer, content creator, and things like that. Hey, coach, hey, we we going somewhere. We traveling somewhere. I don't know where it is. <laughs> we going somewhere because that's after this whole COVID thing's over, man. Like, we're, we're I'm anxious. I need to get out out the house. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's something I have to preach to everyone here. It's, yeah. it's find your mentors, whoever you think is going to get you where you need to go. Um, I don't care what price they charge. If you think they're going to do it, do mm -hmm. it, do it. Yes. No hesitation. You know, mm -hmm. what's important to something that um, I've been trying to figure out the proper way to express this to people. And it, it's a little hard to express, mm -hmm. but hopefully it'll, it'll come across the right way. So, so why do I call myself coach JB? John Vasquez died. So that guy died. Right. So I was named John Vasquez as a kid, but I want people to understand you're not your name. You're not mm -hmm. your name. You're not, when I said I was a banker. So what people do is they attach themselves to their job, to their title. I'm an athlete. I'm a pro football player. I'm this, but what happens when that disappears? What happens if you're a pro athlete and all of a sudden you break your leg? So your whole identity is bought into something that is physical, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have to understand that you are you. You are not your name. You are not a banker. You are not a crypto investor. You're not, you're just you. And, and the key to life and what I'm doing, right? I'm being paid to be coach JV. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, and who is me, right? It's not even coach JV. I'm just a, a high vibrational being who is operating. I, you know, I have dyslexia. I can't spell blah, 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 but I have a team around me that has all the skills. I just fall. So that's something that's really important is like, try not to identify like when people are like grabbing onto, Oh, I, I'm this. Or if I, if I get to be a crypto investor, I'm going to be happy. No, you're just going to be a crypto investor with the same shitty. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you're, you're, you're only going to, so when you pick, I always tell people in our Academy in the process of becoming a millionaire, the most important thing is who are you becoming? I don't give a shit if you become a millionaire, because if you become a millionaire, all you're going to do is exacerbate the current problems. I don't even know if that's the right word, make bigger. Yeah. 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 If you're depressed, you're going to be way more depressed. If you have anxiety, you're going to have way more anxiety. If you think your crypto portfolio is going to crash, imagine it with 10 million. You know, yeah. it's like, oops, oh, his phone's going off here. Sorry about that. Boom. Awesome. I'm back. No doubt. And and I couldn't agree more. And I think part of the reason why um, we've been broke a couple of times and had to come back from the depths was because we weren't ready for that money. We weren't ready for our money. I wasn't, I know for a fact, if I would have made like what the unrealized gains in 2017 from my portfolio, I would have been more arrogant. I would have thought I was hot shit. I wouldn't have worked this hard to do all my research and due diligence on thousands of coins and charts during 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21 and beyond, right? I wouldn't have done all that work. And it was that the harsh reality of my situation that made me work harder to find what's next and, and opportunities. So I, I, I'm grateful that that happened and I got to share my story with everyone here and, and various other things. And um, to kind of pivot into the next and into a different topic, just because we're, we're well-rounded individuals and we want to make sure people understand some of the other things um, we all do. Um, yep. Social media marketing, mm. in my opinion, is the most important thing people could be doing today to scale your business or your life in general whatever it is and um most people don't do it the right way um we have these fake gurus here to try and pretend to tell you buy some followers on instagram no 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 that that destroys the algorithm you have to build it organically and it's very very hard so um kind of what i want to ask you is what was the process um that you went through in order yes. to scale one your TikTok, which is is that a million followers already or close man 930,000 we're almost there <laughs> almost there. TikTok to a million followers your Instagram to about 30 35,000 and and your YouTube channel as well because that takes a lot of work I know for a fact that takes a lot of work so what goes into that yeah. So great question. So let's start with what you, what you started with. Okay. So first of all, I did it completely wrong the first time and I'll show you, you can look yeah. at a specific example, I'll actually show it to you. So if you look at my Instagram for coach JV underscore, which is about 33,000, somewhere around there, go look at our warrior Academy one. So that one was my original JV impacts podcast 
because we've evolved so much, right? That one, when I first started, I was, I, I was buying likes, I was buying follows, I was buying posts. Mm. I didn't know. I came out of corporate America. I didn't know that's didn't, how it didn't work. It ruined my portfolio or my, my thing. So this is the, the one that I built organically, right? So you can yeah. look at it by looking at someone's followers and how much engagement they have. That's really important. But if you go over to my uh, Warrior Academy one, you'll see that one was grown in the beginning. Now it's organic. So don't mm. ever, please understand, don't ever buy followers. Don't ever buy likes because it doesn't make sense. It's never going to give you any business, zero yeah. business. Right? Don't follow for follow. Okay. So that's the things you don't do. How did I explode, right? So you can see the difference in the engagement, right? So it's like, how did I explode, okay? So I finally got really, really fed up, really, really fed up. I was so tired of trying to be something to gain something. So I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna be myself. And I started being unapologetically authentic on my social media and really sharing how I talk, how I walk, how I think, you know, I don't try to do my hair. Like that stage picture is probably the first stage picture I've done because a photo shoot for a clothing company mm. is I just speak my truth. And all of a sudden I found my tribe, my tribe. Yeah. Your and audience that, will find you. Your audience yes. will find you. Yes. yes. You would rather have a hundred engaged followers than a hundred thousand followers with no engagement. So let me repeat that. You'd rather have a hundred engaged followers than a hundred thousand followers with no engagement. Right. So it's like, and I'm, I'm very grateful that the, the, you know, 930,000 people that follow me, I have a lot of engaged followers that follow me. So what I, I use TikTok to move people to my YouTube channel so I can build a deeper relationship with them. So if mm -hmm. you're getting into running a business, you need to be on TikTok. Uh, we, we've scaled multiple, it's TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Why? You know, actually my daughter, I got to give her credit. My daughter said, dad, you got to be on TikTok during the pandemic. I did one video. I had 54 followers last year, 2020, 2020. I had 54 followers. We just, I just started 54. being like 54 followers. A Holy year. shit. Yeah. Because this is a conversation I've had with you often guys. And this is, this is, you're getting a, to see a glimpse of me and coach behind the scenes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had this conversation with you behind the scenes. Um, and I'm like, coach, like I got to scale my TikTok because this algorithm is pure. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the, the virality that it allows for is ridiculous. Like the reach it gives you to to an organic audience is still um, so early and so nice before they tamper with the algorithm that like you can randomly just just hit it overnight. Yep. Hit it overnight, truly. And you said it's about a year, maybe a year and a half since you had 54 followers. Now it's close to a million. So, yes. So. Tonight. So here's the thing. So another thing is, so it's be authentic and then just be consistent. So I want to share people and motivate people. So, and then this isn't to discourage people. This is about consistency. So when I went viral, I had close to 17,000 social media posts, 850 podcasts, and close to a mm -hmm. thousand videos filmed by the time I went viral. But that consistently, it's consistency for three years straight, went from having nothing to financial freedom overnight. Mm -hmm. seems like overnight, but that was almost since October or August, 2017. I never gave up. I kept posting and I stayed consistent. And I, 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 I honed in my message to my audience. The key factor though, guys, is when I went fully authentic, I went fully authentic. I remember somebody told me I was a fake and I were like, Oh, you know, your life. And I said, you know what? F all you guys, man. I'm driving. I, I made my life look like I was balling out of, not balling out of control, but it, like I had my shit together. I'd left corporate America. I had ran out of all my money. And I was like, you know what? I was driving Uber in the middle of the night to keep my family alive. And, and I, I was like, I'm going to start Instagramming this. I was like, guys, I'm broke. I'm driving Uber. And here's what I'm going to do to become a warrior in a modern day society. From that point on, everything started going viral for me. It was like mm -hmm. people were attracted to the story and the grind. And so now my story has changed a little bit. Okay. So now I have a different type of follower. Some people are like, some people have told me to F off because I now have money now. So it's a different audience. People are, some people are still loving the journey, but there's a lot of haters. You can't worry about that stuff. That's the next thing I want to talk about is I went from people clapping for me to people trying to take me out. Don't focus on those people. It doesn't matter. They're just operating at a low vibration. They want what you have. And they're just, if you feed into that, you're literally a mirror reflection of them. That means that you need to work on something inside of yourself. If haters are bothering you, that's a mere reflection of you because we're just vibrational beings, right? Having a human experience. So if a hater is bothering you, that means you have that inside of you. So you got to really, that's hard to accept. 
If no. you're constantly grabbing onto haters, that means you have that inside of you and you have the ability. You need to grow above that so that you can see that if you have haters, that's awesome. That means you're doing something great. That means you're making an impact on the world that people take the time out of their day to, because that's going to stop a lot of people that are, say you want to be a social media influencer. That will stop 99% of you no. because it's good. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is a question that I have. This is a greedy question I have for you, coach, to be honest with you. But, sure. Um, that's something that I've learned that um, your audience and the comments on your posts, it's they can be frustrating sometimes. There is constructive criticism in there. But with me, I'm, I'm a high vibrational person. I love positivity, things that, that are like, no, no, no to me. I'm like, yes, 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 I can. But it gets to the point where I could be antagonizing sometimes, coach. I don't know if you knew that. So some people don't like me too much. So when when I read comments on whether it's like YouTube or, or Twitter, or especially Twitter, oh my goodness, people de degenerate into the worst version of themselves on Twitter and even Instagram. It's one of those things where I don't read comments anymore. And maybe even to a fault because it's... I know there could be some nuggets there that I take out and, and learn from, but it's it's one of those things that it, it it lowers my mood sometimes where it's a very shitty comment, you know. So so yes. something I'll ask you is how do you go about dealing with, with those negative negative comments? Great question. I so to, um, I need yeah. to do better with that myself because sometimes it does get to me. You know? So I think very we're I feel like we're very similar just by watching yourself. So like for example. I'm unlike any other influencer, I would think. I think you're very so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not controlled by my social media at all. Mm -hmm. If I if you see me posting, it's because I want to post. If you see me doing a story, I've, I've been going through some personal shit. And so I've been doing a lot of stories. I'm just, I'm not feeling it, man. I'm not gonna, I don't feel that I have an obligation to anybody. And if that pisses people off, I'm sorry. I don't have an obligation to anybody. I am me. I am me all the time. And so I think that's what's helps me handle it. And what I I and practicing heavily in my life to operate out of Christ consciousness. And so what I see is every single person, whether it's hate or love, is I see them as Christ. That's, and that this may be too, too much for people to go too deep, but I literally see every person as Christ. And so when somebody's hating on me, I see it as Christ consciousness and I can see through that to love, right? So that's how I deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. I know that that person is coming from a point of pain versus a point of love. And usually if you look at some of my comments, if I do respond to them, I say, I love you to those people. Almost every 100% of the time, I would say probably 99% of the time. Um, mm -hmm. Because your reticular activating system, unfortunately, I don't know why this does this, but you can read 100 positive comments. The one negative comment, boom, grabs onto you. Ways, yeah. It's yeah. how we operate. It's how we operate as human beings. And that's why you got to really be consistent with your act. I'm, I'm probably, I, I can admit this, I'm probably one of the most disciplined, consistent people in the world. I, I, I oh, believe yeah. that. You know, yeah, David, you I'm are. The only person I want to meet, thank you. Someone I want to meet is David Goggins. That's somebody who I, I really, I don't look up to anybody. I, I just uh, really admire David Goggins. Um, I admire you. I, I told you you're one of the people I admire. And it's like, there's people I admire, but people I looked up to, or it's like the life of Jesus. That's what I want to model. But um, yeah, I think it's really important because if you're going to be a social media influencer, it will wreck you if you can't handle hate comments. It, it, you won't be able to do it. You just want, it'll ruin your, your, your relationships. It'll ruin your life. It'll ruin your vibration. If you're operating on a low vibration, People aren't going to be attracted to your social media. Yes, without a doubt. And that's not to get it into like some personal thing, but it's one of those things where it's really, it does weigh on you, but you have to power through it because yep. the message goes through 98% of your audience loves you and the people that hate you, they're attracted to you. What, yeah. Whether they want to believe it or not, they want to listen just to talk smack and what they actually probably pay more attention than the people that love you. Oh, 100%. 100%. So it's one of those things where they even gain value from the things you do. So that's very important, Coach. And oh, can I, yeah, I, there was one thing I was going to talk about. I think this will be important. I, I didn't finish with it. It was like, remember when I was going like this, when I was talking about everything's neutral? So yes. everything in the world is neutral, right? Everything is neutral. Our emotions are not, right? So everything happening to us, this conversation is neutral. Every single person is having a different experience. Some people are like, oh, Coach Chevy, this dude's wearing a cutoff shirt and freaking got a pony. <laughs> Who the hell is this dude, right? And some people are like, oh, I like his look. I like his vibration. Some people can look past the kind of hippie-ish look, right? The cool thing is it's neutral. I'm a neutral person here. 
each person has having a completely different experience. So that's the power behind being a human being is we could both be sitting at a light, right? You and I, so let's, let's take me and uh, Bobby. Bobby's on the right, I'm on the left. We're, we're sitting at a light and we're just sitting there listening to our music. It's a red light and all of a sudden, boom, someone gets hit on a motorcycle, gets decapitated. I, I freeze up and I'm like, oh my God. And I can't get it out of my head. I start, you know, I start uh, skipping work. I start sleeping in. I can't focus. I lose my relationship. I become an alcoholic. But Bobby on the right is like, wow, life is short. And he starts living the best life ever, seeing that person's yeah. death as a catalyst to live his life. Two people, neutral situation, completely different experience. So that's where how I deal with haters because it's like, that's their neutral that that's their experience i have it's neutrality the the hate comment is neutral i have a choice to bring it up or i have a choice to bring it down i have a choice to ignore it so everything is neutral someone can be like f you it's neutral i can i cuss a lot and so he pisses people off i'm like it's neutral to me cussing isn't a big deal i cuss in front of my kids people are like oh my god i'm like i do i mean like i don't do it i'm not proud of it it's just how i talk and so mm -hmm. it's like people are like some people oh my god you should i should go to hell for that and it's like it's neutral it's like if you believe that then you have that's in your paradigm and i'm you sure know, it's a they, very they, they say people that curse a lot are authentic and trustworthy i don't know if you knew that oh really i didn't that. i curse a lot too i do yeah. <laughs> So, and it's just, I mean, it's, I hope people are hearing that message because like a lot of people are going in the holidays, right. And you have a lot of family members and it's, it's, it's a lot of anxiety. It's like, just, just everything, the drunk uncle comes, it's neutral, man. Like he's just mm -hmm. having a physical experience, man. It doesn't mean you have to be like, Oh my God, he ruined the time. You let him ruin the time. You let him get a hold of your emotions. You let what your a brother said that the snike snark, snarky comment that they said you it's neutral. The comments neutral. You're deciding to give it energy. Mm -hmm. Now, not to not to um, derail what you were just saying, but to kind of bring it back to like the marketing aspect of everything, oh, yeah. like the content creation part of everything. Each one of these platforms, TikTok is different than YouTube, than Instagram, than Twitter. You know, it's very different. Each one has its own thing. For me, YouTube is where I tell my story and my perspective on what I see in the market, the macroeconomics of things and the political geopolitical events that could be triggering different things in the background but on on um, Twitter is where I crowdsource information at rapid speeds to be able to to uh, be in the know understand things and following the correct accounts does put you one two three four steps ahead of being able to invest in opportunities and know um, the predictive programming is a phrase that you like to use know the predictive programming that could be the future reality right so my instagram is where i got more into lifestyle things and things like that and where i venture off into my next things and um something i'll ask you is because this is something most people don't know is how much time does it take you to one make a TikTok and two make youtube videos and gathering all the information and doing all that work and things like that because i it's know for me it takes a long time right it's my job. Yeah, it's literally, it's, it's my biggest part of my, my existence, I guess. It's what mm -hmm. I do. I'm an information broker. I'm putting information out there. So like um, the, re so the way my day looks is I get up, you know, my first uh, YouTube video goes out around five o'clock in the morning. So I do my research in the evening. So after my, so I'm from two to two to six to seven, whenever my son, I'm, I'm and my daughter's with me, I'm a father. Like I, I do not touch, I'm not, I'm a father. Right. And so, but I do research, Till late at night right and then i go to well not too late for some of you guys <laughs> nine yeah, or ten yeah, o'clock yeah. i'm in bed by by minimum 9 30 10 o'clock so i do my research in the evening it, it's hours and hours a day like the videos per se i don't edit any of my videos i just it's all done mm -hmm. off stream yard if i screw up burp cuss whatever i don't edit my videos so that's helped me a lot just to be me um mm -hmm. so the the editing process is very very easy i just post what happens within that video uh, but mm -hmm. the research takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. The TikTok videos are super easy. I, I, it takes me 60 seconds to do them because I don't plan stuff. I don't, my, my YouTube videos I do, but my TikToks, like when, if I come off a YouTube video, I'm actually talking about the YouTube video, but I don't sit there and go, I just turn it on and I talk. And so mm -hmm. I think, and how, how did I get to that point? So like, if you listen to my podcast, we have over 11, 1200 podcasts now, since when I first did my podcast, you can listen to coach JV podcast, my first podcast 
was, um, I mean, I had PowerPoints for the first year, I would plan it. And now I just speak off and how I speak off the top of my head, I call it speaking through spirit, but it's through like what Jordan talks about is literally the more you educate yourself, the easier it is to speak. Yes. The more, the more knowledge you have, the easier it just comes off the top of your head, you know? So, um, it, it takes me, a, it does take a lot of time. It's, it's a full-time job, but it also is my career. It's what I do for a living. So, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things. <laughs> I know for me, YouTube videos take like two hours and the information I gather is, mm -hmm. is more. And now I'm doing interviews and trying to get information to yep. everyone too. So it's, it's it can be a lot. So I already know. So I could imagine. I'm shocked that you say TikTok takes 60 seconds though. For me, it take, for me TikTok's a whole different dimension. I don't know why it's so hard for me, but I think... I think after today, I'm going to be like, all right, coach, you got me. I'm, I have to go extremely hard over here. I have to. Yeah, I'm telling you, TikTok, people are sleeping on it, man. It's like, it's it's really? gotten me, I mean, it, it's taken me worldwide. I mean, literally, we went to Dubai. People knew us in Dubai from TikTok. It was wild. It was wild. We're walking down the street. People knew who we were in Dubai from TikTok. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like, what, what other platform can you do that for free to get that type of, of reach? I mean, it's like, it's wild. It is. It is. Let me think. Let me think. Hmm. I guess since we're we're in here talking, I mean, we could dabble on crypto a little bit. We haven't really too much, but for for people at home that know us for that, like, let's talk about you know just the state of the market and and things that we see going on because um I'm sure we have slightly different perspectives, but I always love um gaining these perspectives because it you might see something that I don't. So something I'm curious to know is um, what do you see coming maybe in the next, you know, couple months into the next year? Because 2022 yeah. is fast approaching and there's a lot of moving pieces with this market for sure. Yeah, I think so. I'll talk about like the macroeconomics and I'll, I'll bring it down to crypto of where, how I feel about crypto and what I think is going to happen. I, I have very similar sentiments to you. I get a lot of my information from you, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank so, you. So, so I, I, I have a lot of respect for you, man. So um, I do believe the market is going to go parabolic. Uh, I still think it's going to have a massive move up, but I think the pullback is going to be really, really hard. And here's why. Um, because when markets collapse, markets collapse, right? And so what's people don't realize what's happening. You have an inverted um, euro dollar right now, the, the euro. It's like literally the, the, we're set up. You have the Shemitah, seven-year Shemitah. So let's take it from all aspects. Seven-year Shemitah, right? Within a usually a Shemitah year, you have a massive collapse. You have the uh, LIBOR, which is switching to SOFOR, which is an interest rate change, which is happening in December. I think it already happened, right? So they don't even know how they're, if this is going to affect interest rates fully. Banks are changing their regulations, completely changing their regulations, right? Um, you have all these things happening. So to me, they have to black swan this and collapse economy to get the people to move. Because what do you do? Problem, create a problem, create a reaction in the people. And based on the reaction in the people, you come up with the solution, you become the hero. So I believe we're going to be moving into a CBDC within by by 2023 in America. It'll be done by the Fedwire. It's going to be you'll have a uh, a Fed wallet, and then you'll have it because it's all you already have the pass through accounts. They already have that set up. You have the Fed wallet. You have your cryptocurrency wallet, and I believe commercial banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, you will be able to do DeFi loans, Ethereum loans. I believe they're going to jump right on with that. So what do I think is going to happen in the market? I think we're going to go massively parabolic um, because you know crypto market's so thin compared to the global markets. Is the whales are moving the market, so they're going to we're going to go parabolic. We're going to be, I highly recommend you have an exit strategy and then it's going to come collapsing back down and it's going to be, mm -hmm. I think a normal bear market. But again, I speak with experience from learning from experts like you that have been in the market for a long time. I've only been in for two and a half years. I'm very, I admit that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do know that we're going to have a massive stock market collapse. I'm not trying to freak people out, but you know, the just overbroke mm -hmm. system, the 401k system, it's like, it's a that's a fraud man in my opinion when when do you think that stock market collapse is going to happen because to me this thing should have collapsed in like 2018 in my personal <laughs> opinion it's just fantasy yeah. economics has been propping everything yeah. up it's money printing interest rate cuts stock buybacks yeah. repo liquidity liquidity injections all of this has been propping up this market art artificially so i'm curious when what? do you see this this market collapsing because i i actually um, I don't know if you saw the John Deaton and Valuetainment Patrick, but David interview. Um, I didn't know. It's a very powerful one. 
um, that has to do with the lawsuit and things like that. But um, there was a point that was brought up where there's a U.S. congressman. And you know these congressmen, I don't know if you know this, they're the best traders in human history. They're always right. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> but I, I wonder why. But um, <laughs> they're, they're shorting the market quarter one. 2022. So to me, that that's the obvious indicator. I'm like, okay, so the smart money or, you know, the politicians, the corrupt money, they're placing their bets against the stock market at this moment for quarter one, 2022. Do I know when exactly that's going to happen? No, but probably some point in March, right? We can see something like that happen. And then um, it's, it's interesting. It's so interesting to see how you can if you're if you have your ears to the streets and and the financial world you know everything that's going to happen already it's just when and yeah. what will the final numbers be because um it's it's crazy it's crazy yeah i i couldn't agree more with that with the sentiment it's like you know you got an overvalued stock market i love warren buffett the warren buffett indicator i mean last time i looked i think it was overvalued by 207 percent. a lot of people don't look so it's basically you take the gdp the global you know the gdp times the stock market value or divide it, right? And that gives you an overvalued stock market. So you hit something very powerful. You talked about money printing. Well, with them tapering, the bond purchases, <laughs> now doubling the tapering. So they're going to start taking the world, uh, America off life support, right? Slowly, <laughs> methodically taking us off life support. And so I, it, I think it's going to be a planned crash. They're going to crash it. They're going to, just like they did in 1929, man, they crashed the economy <laughs> and who saved us? The Federal Reserve, right? Federal Reserve came in, bailed out the banks, the banks that weren't involved in the Federal Reserve or underneath their conglomerate. They gave those banks loans to give the other banks loans to pull them under and gain control. And it's like, think about why wouldn't they crash the system to move us into a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, to pull us closer to the central banks. And I believe banks are going to look a lot different in the next five years. Because I was in banking school, uh, what was that, 2000. I think it was like nine years ago, um, they were already having a switch to fintech in the simulation model. It was like fintech, fintech, financial technology. And we were like, what the hell is fintech, right? We're already mm-hmm. replacing tellers with talking ATMs, like already moving towards a fintech environment. And so I agree with you, man. I, I, I think it's going to, um, I think it's going to be really ugly. So I, I think it's going to be, with, it's going to be within 2022, early 2022. Like I said, I, I every date I've predicted, I've been completely wrong. <laughs> every date I've said. <laughs> Me too, bro. Me too. It's it's We can't time these things, but we know what the events are that are going to happen to, for the most part, you know, sure. there may be random things here and there, but our good old friend Klaus Schwab and, and his little kitty Bicklesworth, I, I like to call it Bicklesworth, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're calling for this little cyber pandemic and then they simulated that that yeah. cyber attack on the financial system with the IMF in those 10 countries and then they're over here. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's, yep. it's something to behold without a doubt. But here, here's the powerful thing is like, think about it. We're, we're such a small, like, you know, take all of our followers combined, right? We're, we're such a small percentage of the population that's paying attention. Oh, How and, crazy and, have, is that? And, and to them, we have our little tinfoil hats on real tight and, and <laughs> we don't know anything and we're idiotic. Of course, of course. Yeah. It's one so. of those things, man. Yeah, I just I always tell people have an exit plan, you know, have an exit. I have a very strict exit plan that I filled out. It's like I just I follow my exit plan. I don't worry about anything else. I got my fundamental cryptos. You know, I'm I'm uh, yeah, I'm, which, I, I'm happy with my crypto portfolio. I'm happy which, with my, which, which coins are those now? I, I remember you had mentioned those um, to me on a call a little earlier, but just for um, our audience here, just which coins are you extremely bullish on? Uh, obviously XRP, I huge. I love Ethereum. I love Ethereum, ADA, Ethereum, ADA, um, XRP, XLM, Algorand. Uh, I love Algorand. And then we're really getting into meta. We're really getting into so block. Um, I just started uh, stacking up some block. We were getting, I think I talked to you on the call. We're really getting into the metaverse, getting yes. involved in the metaverse portion of it. I don't have a lot of knowledge in it, but I brought experts around me. Um, mm-hmm. So my, my things I'm more, mostly bull- heavily bullish on because I try to stay in my lane is I understand banking, right? So I try to stay in the ISO 20,022 range. And so that's really what I'm focused on is those type of cryptocurrencies. And I learned a lot from you, to be honest with you. Like I going through, I, w- I went through your Unimic course. I'm, I went through your Unimic course when I first uh, found your channel. And um, that's how my whole journey started. A lot of people don't realize that. I, I share that openly. Like I, I, I love what you've done, man. Cause I was like, you really helped me understand where this crypto market was going. And I love the way that you explained it because you explained it for me not just a crypto investor but it was like 
the economy. That's what I loved about it because I understand the economy and economics. And so um, the ISO, ISO 20,022 coins, um, we're really getting involved in metaverse, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so the main coins, XRP, XLM, Algorand, um, ADA, I'm a big Ethereum fan. A lot of people keep mm. telling me Ethereum is going to collapse, it's going to go to zero. I'm like, it ain't going nowhere, dude. I, mm. I, 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 will, I will bet my whole portfolio that it ain't going nowhere. Oh, no, it's, 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 not, it's not going anywhere without a doubt. But I do think it will be surpassed by my personal. I, I don't know if you know this, Coach JV. I, I recently got engaged. So I, I've been in a committed <laughs> relationship with XRP for a very long time. We have children together. But yeah. I recently proposed to Hedera Hashgraph. I, I think yeah, Hedera yeah. Hashgraph will be a top three coin in past Ether and things like Love. that. That's still that's still um, left to be determined. But I think I think that's one of those that you should heavily consider adding to that portfolio of yours. Dude, I'm, I'm not going to not take that advice from you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's literally my my second largest holding and and I, I love it. I love it. It's the entry point is still early relative to the green yeah. scheme of things. So. That so that's out. called that's what I call wise counsel. I always tell people <laughs> when people tell me seek wise counsel and then they show me who they sought, I'm like, that's not wise counsel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, people are like, oh, I went to my parents and my parents are their parents are broke and they're that's their wise counsel. I'm like, you're taking financial advice from people who are broke. I know it's your parents, but it's like so that's what's called wise counsel warriors. When somebody like this tells you get into Hedera, not financial <laughs> advice, but I'm gonna go with that. Hey, but you should follow it anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um that's interesting that so just just to be transparent i'll share some of mine just because you shared some of yours as well um personally my biggest holding is xrp still to this moment um it makes only about 35 percent of my portfolio at the moment because right now i'm looking to use my other um altcoins as a vehicle to funnel profits into XRP because I do believe that XRP tends to move less. So take profits from my non XRP olds and drive those profits into XRP for the big run. Um, Hedera Hashgraph, one of my largest holdings as well. I believe Alliance Block, in my opinion, will be one of um, is one of the most undervalued coins in the market. That may, may be one of those that you want to look into. Um, Stellar, of course. Um, I recently had an interview with the CEO of Proppy, and I'm very um, heavily invested in Proppy. Um, they launched the first crypto to real estate NFT transaction um, endorsed by the World Economic Forum. Um, <laughs> planning to dive into a metaverse real estate as well. So it's like, and um, it, it, yeah, they're a powerhouse. And they also... Um, and four states, including Arizona, California, Texas, and Florida, they help with the closing of real estate transactions. So to me, that's something that I know and that I personally love. And that's why I'm very invested um, in that one as well. Um, Cardano, Quant, VeChain, um, oh, v -Chain. Algorin, uh, quite a few other others as well. But those are some of my favorites just for people that were wondering, you know. I think you said something powerful. Like the reason why, like I, I'm, I follow what I know, like, and trust, like what I, I yeah. try not. To, and I seek wise counsel from people when I don't know something, right. For example, the metaverse, we have, we have a, a, a company we launched called crypto Phoenix assets. We're building like, kind of like, I, I want to caution saying this. It's not a mutual, it's like a type of a partnership type thing where people can get involved in the metaverse, like a mutual fund, which is not a mutual fund SEC yet. <laughs> but I just want to make sure we, we make that very yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, it's, but I'm, I, I hired experts. We brought on experts. The team did, excuse me. We got John Rotundo. We got my CFO, Jeremy. Um, we basically brought on the team, Abdullah, Mario, give them all a shout out. Uh, uh, brought on the team that are experts in those. We have a person who games all day. That's what they do all day. And so I trust their judgment because they're spending all day in the metaverse. And I think that's important. Like I don't just jump into cryptos because somebody tells me to I, I make sure that i understand it i know it i always tell my warriors that because they'll be like oh i got in this and it dumped on me and i'm like D what did you know about the crypto mm -hmm. uh i just knew it was going to make money well we're not in the casino man like <laughs> go to the casino and just to, like you got to understand know and like the, you know sometimes you gotta the wise like you told me i'm gonna get some hedera man like that's wise <laughs> counsel i understand what hedera is though i understand what hedera hash yeah. is 
I've just been also too, for me, what's been crazy is I've been so damn busy. Um, my admin, she texts me and says, look at your portfolio. That's, I know that's how detached I am from anything physical. She's like, look at your portfolio. Look at every morning to look at my port. That's how detached I've made myself from physical things. Like if my mm -hmm. portfolio collapses zero, it doesn't affect me at all. Mm -hmm. If yeah. all my businesses go to zero, and that's what I try to teach people is mm -hmm. you are already rich. You're already wealthy. You're already healthy. I'm already the richest person in the world. So you can't take anything from me. And my crypto portfolio always seems to do pretty good, man. I'll tell you what, coach, if my crypto portfolio tanked to the floor, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the richest person in the world. I'd be pretty broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pretty broke, dude. I promise you, you can do it all over again, man. No, you're right. But uh, people would be frustrated. They'd be like, bro, what happened? Oh, I'm going to be like, hey, but that's not going to happen, right, guys? That's not going to happen. But um, it is fun. We're, we're going to where this group is going to be the richest. I mean, if everybody does it correctly and really understands. So what I always tell people be, you know, just try to understand that you're already rich. That's what I'm trying to teach people like this left, right, up, down. I don't want to get into politics, but I'm not going to. No, I'm not no don't do it. I've, I've personally, I've made a commitment to myself to not speak about COVID ever again or yeah, politics. No, no. What I'm moving saying, forward especially because it's too that. much what i'm saying is like th i agree with you 100 we don't talk about it it's like don't attach to that stuff that that is going to make you sick that's gonna make you sick. The yes distractions the and the, yes. Division. the division that's what i'm talking about like if you want to wreck your life attach to that stuff mm -hmm. just you already have everything you need man i, I agree with you 100 we don't we don't talk about it we don't it's like, I, I, I'm living the best two and a half years of my life and other people are living the worst time of their life. I'm like, this no. has been the best. It's paradigm, dude. It's here. And what I'll tell you just a, for people that don't know me um, and a little bit about my story and my background too, um, I genuinely, when, I, when you say um, like manifestation and visualization and things like that, I genuinely feel destined to have been in this moment poetically by some a power higher than myself because trust me i could not have done be here where i am today without like some type of intervention or something like that like i randomly came across this book called risky is the new safe about i think it was 11 years ago um and it taught me about like gold and silver and investing in, in different things and they were saying there's going to be a point where everything implodes on itself, the system is going to die. And that during that change, that is where people who take advantage of the opportunity, because with great crisis comes great opportunity, right? And never waste a good crisis, right? That's what the politicians and elites say. Um, that is where you can, you know, place your pennies, like Jordan likes to say, against the elite's dollars, right? Wow. And you can transform um, the trajectory of where you're going to go, right? So I knew that there was going to be a moment just like this that we're experiencing right now, where the paradigm shift begins and we get to, you know, transform our lives. And well, coach, before this paradigm shift was happening, I like change. I was stagnant. I was, I was stagnant, broke, depressed, suicidal, all the, the whole nine yards. So coach, similar story. But it's yeah. one of those things where I knew there was going to be a moment where my time could come and I can help guide people through the change because the change is yep. coming yep. and, and here it is now. And it's one of those things where I know, I know we said we weren't going to talk about COVID or this health crisis or anything, but th this is what I'll say. Um, I'm uniquely qualified to talk about all the non-health aspects of this because what I've independently studied for about 10 years is um, geopolitical black swan events and mm. authoritarianism as well as like the banking system crypto and things like that so 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 when we talk about covid and all the things that's going on i'm like hmm this is i knew this was going to happen there's it was supposed to be a currency crisis i see that because of this we're printing all this money and no one is blaming the banks and hmm, mm -hmm. there's interesting things going on here i could have never thought it was going to be a health crisis that caused this but this is the reason they're giving. It was going to happen anyway. And that makes one ask questions. We're not going to get into that. But it's yes. one of those things where I say to myself, wow, like this, this could, for the people that were stuck in the old system and the old paradigm and aren't looking forward, it's very, very hard. And for those people like me and yourself and everyone here listening and at home, um, we're, the, we're the people taking advantage of the opportunity that that this new world is going to bring right so yes. it's it's 
interesting, man. It's very interesting and it's very frustrating when people, they don't want to listen to what you have to say. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're filled in a world with responders and not listeners. And um, yeah. that's the, some of the wisest advice I've ever gotten is that always speak less, dude, just speak less because everyone else has some that, that you can extract and you can copy and paste into your life that could maybe change um, where you're going to go. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's one of those things where I wouldn't, I would definitely recommend people do that. And um, ask questions. Don't be afraid to look stupid. I look dumb every day. I really do. <laughs> like I'm amongst developers and, and CEOs and all these people and they're teaching me things. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know anything. I genuinely know how much I don't know. You know? That's awesome. So it's one of those things. But uh, because I don't know and I know what I don't know, I'm going to ask you about like some of your metaverse, um, newfound metaverse, you know, either investments or knowledge and things like that because i have some a specific one that i'm looking to dive very deep into and then we can just um bounce ideas off each other if you're interested yeah i, I don't man they're they're doing all the work there to be honest with you like i the block is what i got into recently the blocktopia mm -hmm. that's a big one yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh gala gala is really really big with us really really big so those are the two that we're really heavily focused on right now block and gala so i would personally recommend for your team if they're interested to look pretty heavily into upland, upland, upland. Okay. that's that's a metaverse i'm looking to um to uh dive deep into and what it is is essentially a copy of you know properties in the real world you know mm. just in the metaverse version of it and you know some people are like oh, i don't like that mm, i don't know what's going on to me i'm like just imagine if you are a corporation or your your famous building something like that maybe it's like the empire state building for example and you know someone has your dig your metaverse version of your property right oh well, i mean everything's bs now everything's digital <laughs> maybe they want to have the rights of their own property within a metaverse and let me be honest with you i don't know which metaverse is going to be the one to win quote but I'm pretty sure there's going to be metaverse interoperability and things like that. Yeah. That that makes it a lot of sense to me. So in my opinion, guys, like maybe take one to two percent of your portfolio and shoot some darts. Because, because one thing I know for sure is that Decentraland is going for more money than some mansions. So it's it's some nonsense. It really is nonsense to me. But there's opportunity and nonsense. People still think crypto is nonsense. Yes. So while I'm diving deep into this and trying to understand more and still kind of speculating, we have to understand that in times of great inflation um, and in times of great crisis, you know, people that are speculators amass, amass great fortunes, excuse me, amass great fortunes and the demand by the masses for a more authoritarian government comes mm -hmm. as well. Those two um are directly proportional right at a time of great inflation speculators make off like bandits and authoritarian governments come to rise and i think i genuinely believe this is retail's last shot to make it up the ladder of life oh, if you yes. will, before there's there's before there's complete control so mm -hmm. we're we're in the right place at the right time and it's about hustling man it really is like create opportunities from your mind and out of thin air um, yes. because we need to. Yes. I love it, man. Love it. Let me think. Let me think. Was there something else? Anything else you wanted to talk about coach? That's up to you. No, I just, I'm very grateful for this opportunity, man, to meet you guys and connect. And I think for people out there just to continue to network with people, I think that's, that's the key. That's what's made me successful is I'm constantly networking with people. Like yes. I, and, and, don't operate in scarcity. Like, like there's, if you own a business, we have crypto companies, right? We have uh, investments and stuff like that. It's like the, you can go much further with more people. Like you, nobody's taking, that's what I want to just leave people with is nobody's taking anything from you. 
You can have two crypto influencers right next to each other, very successful if they work together and they can help more people. So like my whole mission is freeing people's dome freedom. I just want to free every single. So we've, we've retired 10 people from corporate America that actually work in our company. Now we've retired 10, 10 people from corporate America now. So my goal is to retire as many human beings as possible from corporate America to understanding a freedom system. Right. And so I think that's the biggest thing is I want to leave people with this. Don't the only, the only thing that's as scarce is your belief in it. That's it. You know, mm -hmm. if the, stock market crashes or the economy crashes or your 401k crashes it doesn't mean you crashed it just gives you an opportunity to reset and rebuild that's all it is it's not it's not catastrophic you know you're not you're still alive you can still move you can still walk you can still talk what it tells you is that you you weren't paying attention you just weren't paying attention right so now you know that now you know right just make me when i left corporate america i lost everything i'm like, okay something's wrong something's wrong and so i just rewired my brain i have different people i hang out with now different influences i read different books um i'm I, i'm very structured on my thing so i don't believe in scarcity I, I just don't believe in it like i'm not attached to like when the crypto drops 35 percent. i'm not like oh my god it's just like it's i buy the dip i always say buy the dip don't trip you know so it's yeah. i just hope I, hope I can get that out to people i love what you said and i'm a big believer of your network becomes your net worth right yeah and and being able to expose yourself in front of people that are where you want to be is the number one thing that um i believe has helped me get to where i am you get to where you are and everyone in here is going to get to where they want to go if you're not already there um i know the answer to this question but i'm going to ask it so that people kind of gain this information so you said you have 10 people that you've helped retire from corporate america that are on your team right now like yep. they're, I'm sure they're, how did you find these people? Did they happen to come from <laughs> your own program? Is that Great the case? Question. Every single person that works in our academy went through our program. So the, mm -hmm. basically the way it works is that everybody has organically become uh, a team member on our thing. So we have a, a volunteer, like a council, and then we have people who are, are uh, work for our company. And so every single person has, every single person on our team has gone through our academy. And so mm -hmm. people like, we don't apply. It's just a natural, people call it, one time someone called me the Carol Baskin of, of <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just it's, we create a loving, positive environment where people can become themselves. And we work to put people in the positions that suit them the best. Mm -hmm. We don't try to put someone in a round hole, you know, round in a, in a square peg. We don't do that. We like, we'll allow them to evolve and we'll adjust the company uh mm -hmm. around certain positions to make sure that people are in the right position right that's really really important we have a freedom company so people don't have schedules they can come and go as they please they can take vacation what they want as long as they get their work done in a lot of time we also added in profit sharing so we give mm -hmm. um we're going to start giving basically we did our first we're going to start giving profits of the company back to the people so my goal is to to free as many like i'm going to be i already know i'm going to be wealthy i already know that because I'm freeing people. It's very simple. The more people I free, the freer I become. It's it's so simple, man. It's just mm -hmm. such a if you if you help more people, you're just gonna you're you're gonna have a lot of abundance. It's 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 just adopt that and you'll be good to go. And something and that's something I really respect from from what you're doing because I have myself a mentorship program as well that I launched um a couple months ago. And now we already have people that we said, okay, all right, these people have contributed a lot. We're going to raise them to a certain level and help uh, because they've helped my community a lot. So now it's time where I'm looking to scale and I'm like, and some of them are in here. Hello, everybody. And <laughs> where I'm looking to scale and potentially begin onboarding people and, and copying and pasting that okay. model that you've had um, into my own business and my own future. So and coach, another thing, coach, sorry to interrupt, but one thing we encourage too, like all of our team members have the ability to have side hustles. We encourage, because in corporate mm -hmm. America, I was told I couldn't have a side hustle. It pissed yes. me off. So like, you know, you guys, some people have worked with our media team. Some people, you know, like I tell my team, get a side hustle, man. Yeah, I want my team to be wealthy. Like I want them to be wealthy. And if they come to me and say, JV, I can do this on my own. Let's go, go for it. Mm. We'll support you, right? Uh, if, if there's one thing that um, I preach is that I, I tell Jordan too, I'm like, hey, dude, do whatever you got to do. Just let's get X, Y, Z's on and we're good to go. And Jordan does whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> You know, so I know with with me, I want to build um, freedom warriors, if you will, and entrepreneurs, not not people that just are stuck to an occupation. So that's something um, yep. that really resonated with me too, Coach. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Whew, man, that was a real one. I always <laughs> love it. 
I always love it. Um, let's see, there's no other questions from the audience. Coach, I know you're a very busy man. I don't want to keep the rest of your day. Um, but I do have to say thank you as always for trying to, um, you know, include the community, include mine and your communities together and make sure that we all um, learn as much as we can. Um, perspective building is key and, and thank you for shedding light and, you know, some of your businesses, what you do and, and everything else, like your, your perspective on life is, is something I, I truly respect and try to model to the best of my ability. And I'm sure plenty of people in here as well um, believe the same thing. So uh, without a doubt, coach, um, love you to death, my brother. Something I do have to say is that Ken Mack actually messaged Jordan and I during the interview and was like, hey, let's get some going. <laughs> and I'm like, Ken, I'm like, that's, 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 you know, he had five, 589 followers. He messages us during this interview. Like, like the, the universe works in crazy ways, my brother. Without that's energy, doubt. man. Energy. I'm telling you, it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. If people could realize that they are just I'll leave people with this. You're just the thought and desire. That's all you're experiencing. Look around your physical reality around, look at your bank account, look at your relationship, look at your kids, look at your job. Mm -hmm. It's a thought and desire. Nobody forced you to get that job. Nobody forced you to be in that relationship. Nobody forced you to be broke. And if you can accept that and take responsibility for that, you're going to be the richest person in the world. Without a doubt. And dude, if I could tell everyone at home is to say, just, just, take that advice and roll with it and and you'll transform your life without a doubt um i'm gonna watch this interview again on 2x speed because i got some nuggets that need <laughs> need to take back as well but um coach anything you need from me you already know just give me a little message i'm sending my love um to the family and team your way and um yeah man let me know anything right, guys. love you jordan love you bearable Bowl. appreciate you guys man all right guys and everyone at home you deuces. Talk about things in all right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.